coming up on Two Wheels this week. Jeff meets some more wacky Goldwing owners as he travels to the local golf club. Could this be the ultimate in golfing accessories? And Richard Hammond rides Suzuki's latest GSXR 750. But first, Wayne travels to Burnley for the launch of a brand new bike. If you were going to treat yourself to a brand new machine with your hard earned cash, how do you go about it? Well, you get the brochure and you have a look at the spec. You might ask your mate what he thinks of the bike. You might even read the magazines and see what the journalists think, their opinion. You could even possibly watch Two Wheels and listen to Paul Johnston and Jeff Stone and ask their opinion of what they think of the bike that you fancy. But really, if you had the chance, you'd like to ride one. Well, that opportunity doesn't always arise, but there's a new concept been launched by these people, Montessa, where you can actually have a ride before you buy. So that's got you confused, hasn't it? Because many road bike riders out there wouldn't have a clue what the name Montessa means. Well, it's a manufacturer, it's a Spanish manufacturer, and they work in association with Honda. So it's a combination of two very clever companies producing a trials bike. Trials, what's trials all in aid of? Well, what you simply do is you go uphill, down dale, over rocks, round trees, turn tight corners, ride over slippy land, you name it, you have an awful lot of fun on a trials bike. You can play on them or you can compete on them. It's very simple. Obviously, Montessa isn't the only brand available. It's just that they've decided to give you a chance to try them. You've got Boltaco, you've got Scorpo, you've got Yamaha. They still are involved in trials in a small way. You've got other brands such as Gas Gases. Strange names, aren't they? matters not. They're all very, very special machines designed and built to do a very good job. And I suppose you might as well have a look at how the job's done. Well, why don't you watch the master himself, Dougie Lampkin, on one of these machines riding at the Indoor Arena trial way back in January. Come here, mate. Come and pull up here. There. Yeah, nice one. Lee, tell me a bit about this now. You've had the opportunity of riding one of these Montessas. Is this the first time you've been on one, one of these Montessas? New one, yeah. New one. Yeah, because this is the, like the 2001 version, isn't it? So I suppose it's uh, a great opportunity to ride one before they're really available. Um, what about you ride as we speak now, then? What's your current machine? Gas, gas. Gas, gas. Is it because you fancy trying something out different or, or what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have any of your mates got alternative bikes? Do you keep trying each other's bikes? Yeah, Fens at shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, so so you get a chance to try all different bikes, and that's why you've come here to have a dabble on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said shop, why do you work in a shop? Uh, I help out at BMBs at Royston. Right, and so, so therefore, and their trials shop. Yeah. So you get Rolling every trials. opportunity to, to have a go at a, a trials bike there, but luckily by coming here, can get a chance also to have a go on a new machine. Yeah. So, are we uh, expecting Lee to be uh, a world champion, Dougie Lampkin, at your art out there? Is, is that your next is that potential? Potential, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, you've got to practice a bit, yeah, have you? Yeah, because he is a star. <laughs> and you've got to look at Dougie Lampkin, you never know, you could be mistaken for him. <laughs> Kevin! Kevin, come here a minute! How are you doing, mate? All right. All right. Listen, I can tell from the way you're riding this bike that you're just not new to this. You've obviously done this before. Yeah. Uh, just as a matter of interest now, are you a regular Montessa rider or not? No, I'm a gas gas rider. Oh, a gas gas rider? Yeah. So, by coming here today, you've had the opportunity to ride one of these months. Yeah. That's the idea. Exactly. Now, it's a bit of a rarity, this, isn't it? Ordinarily, you don't get the chance, do you? No, you've got to normally have to buy it and then take, take it from there, but we get the opportunity to ride these one testers, which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I won't ask you if you're completely convinced on them yet, as it is, but, but have you been riding trials for a while? I've been since I was 15, and now pushing... Oh, oh, don't... don't hey, <laughs> you're only in your 20s, obviously, so you won't be riding a few years. No. But I can tell by the way you ride, you're obviously very competent. Have you had a dabble with lots of different brands? Um, yes, Bultors, so, yeah. Earlies and um, Gas Gasses. Had a beater, yeah, yeah, and then the Yamaha, the pinky one. Oh yeah, yeah, so you've had the whole hit, yeah, you know, including the air cooled yams, which is a, a good starter bike. I know it is. Um, this is not dissimilar to the likes of what Dougie Lampkin uses in World Trials. 
you reckon it's beyond the average man's use, or are they very manageable, these things? That's what I came to find out. This yeah. is this is perfect for the, the good, the clubman, and it's really soft, the power, excellent for getting up slippy, slippy clicks like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah really yeah. enjoyed it. Very useful. You're obviously not from this neck of the woods, which is Burnley. Where are you from? I'm from uh, in County Durham. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, Bishop Auckland, that's where I live. Have you come down today to have a dabble? Actually, now I work in uh, Rolls-Royce and Bentley, designing oh, cars, right. so it's just up the road, and now we're up the road. Oh, you're obviously a very intellectual, very clever fellow. What <laughs> we don't have pick them, don't we, in our programme? Uh, just then, just to finalise, you've had a dabble on this. Uh, I believe you've had to throw a few quid in the kitty that's for the right. charity. Yep. It goes to a good cause, which is great, so it's a two-fold idea. Chance to ride a bike and a chance to raise a few quid for charity. Uh, is there a, a potential sale in one of those? Absolutely, but don't tell them that. All right then, yeah, we'll not give the idea your key. <laughs> so you're obviously going to try and do a bit of negotiation. Absolutely. Mate. All right, well, we wish you the best of luck with your trials and your negotiations on buying one of these. I better leave you to go and play them. Thank you. All right, thanks very much, Cheers. Kevin. Cheers. And then we've just got a bit of a queue going, but it'll be number two bike and it won't be very long. No problem, thanks for right, Thank okay. you. All right, Cheers. thanks very much. Thanks Thank you. It's uh, popular, this. You can make a fortune. Can we, we not try and send Bob in a pickled egg and see if we can make a few quid out of it? We've been really busy, but as you know, it's for charity. But I have been busier until you turned up. I think you've been frightening a few of them off. Don't be saying that. People get the wrong impression of me. <laughs> it's the kids that don't want to come near me. I don't that, know why. Is that what it is? Yeah, they're frightened, yeah. So, just run this by us then. If, if, I mean, it's very unusual. Road bikers, for example, which 90% of our viewers are into road bikes, mm. they haven't got a hope in a house chance of riding a bike if they fancy buying one, unless the dealer might just let them have one that they've got on test, but it's very difficult. Yeah. I would expect it's going to be even more difficult on a competition bike because you're going to mess it up, you can scratch it, bang it dirty, whatever. Well, it's been difficult for us in the past to be able to have the margins to do this sort of thing. We've always had been involved in major exhibitions which have been costly. What we've always been asked for is to have a go on the bike. So what we decided to do this year was to do this test, incorporate it with this trial, so that people could actually come and have a go, instead of just seeing one on a stand on, on a display. Yeah, because, I mean, they can sit on a bike anywhere. They can go, like you say, you can go to a bike show. You've got the dirt bike show, for example. Mm. Every off-roader in the world, or in this country in particular, goes to the dirt bike show, sit on a bike, that's it. Mm. You can't do it, you can't plan it. So they don't know it's good, bad or other. Well, no, I mean, they get 24,000 visitors to the dirt bike show, but nobody's actually getting to ride one. Right. So They're you're... just looking at how pretty they look on a stand. Yeah, you know, they're yeah. not actually feeling how it runs, how the engine goes So they anything. can still go there. They can still see oh, them. They because can, yeah. obviously there's dealers who, who sell Montessa, sell Honda. Who will sells, have bikes whatever, on the stand, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they can get a chance. But here they can come and play. They can. But you had another motive as well, didn't you? You've done also, when I said they can pay 10 bob in a pickle day, I was joking, but truth is, you are asking for some money, but it's a donation thing, isn't it? It's a voluntary donation donation for charity. We're yeah. not specifying any amount, we're just leaving it to the, to the actual customer to, to make whatever contribution he wants. So it's a twofold thing. It is. But I've noticed that not just trials people are having a go. There's a guy arrived, obviously with a road bike, he's got a road helmet. Mm -hmm. He's having a play on a trials bike with a road helmet. Doesn't look quite right to me, but he's got a helmet on at least, that's good on him. So he's having a go. So I suppose it's, it's a, a possibility we might get bums on seats. On trials bikes. It's broadening the horizon of the sport. We're preaching to the converted all the time. At the, for, for example, at these shows, we are preaching to the converted. We've advertised this through our own premises. We've advertised it locally and we've advertised it nationally. So we're hoping to get a whole spectrum of people, not people that have just ridden before or people that have already got bikes, but people that want to have a go. So it's a great idea. Presume you'll do it in the future, will you? I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with the way it's gone so far today. This is obviously our first attempt, and I'm chuffed to bits with the way it's gone, so I can see no reason not to make it an annual event. I'm led to believe, though, that you're not so picky and choosy on who has a go. You, you said that you're quite happy to let everybody have a go. Why is it then I was refused? Because <laughs> I've seen you ride before. Are you trying to say something? <laughs> You're only all right when you've got one of those chairs on the side, haven't you? I have been well known for wanting always that little bit on the side. Yeah, yeah. three right, wheels, though, I meant. Yes, of course. I of too. course, of course. Well, look at this. Maybe Wayne did actually get a ride. Find out later. Now, I've got to be honest with you, golf really isn't my cup of tea. In fact, it's not my game at all. I don't really like the game. But one of the problems that you do have, and they often do this in car road tests, is when you come to your car, you open the boot, and you think, can I get a set of golf clubs in? I can't. But what about if you're a keen biker? Well, there is a way, if you are.
Morning, Heidi. Morning, Jeffrey. How are you doing? Very well. Hi, Eric. Hi, Jeff. How are you? I'm all right. Have you had a good game? Oh, don't you start. Don't I've you start. I've heard about your games. <laughs> on the golf course as well? Uh, yeah. Now look, we did a little bit of a setup here because on the back of your bike you've got some golf clubs that look remarkably like mine. Well, yeah, I know yeah. you've not got your own set really. <laughs> but we mustn't let the cat out of the bag, no. or is that golf out of the bag, or Something we'll, like we'll that. forget all that. But Eric, tell me, what have you done with, with this two sets of golf clubs? Come around the back and tell us what's what. <laughs> well, as you know, the gold wingers are uh, sort of renowned for putting crazy things on the back of the bikes. They have trailers and. Uh, ice boxes and all sorts of lights and toys. Yeah. And uh, about three years ago, I got into golf and it took all my spare time. So I didn't have any time to ride my bike. So I thought, let's combine the two. Okay. So we built this contraption okay. to go on the back of the wing. So now we go on the bike and play golf. So one set's yours and the other set's Heidi's? Yeah. Yeah. So you combine all sports in one. Sorry, yeah. I, I didn't mean you, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Every, so to speak. Every, so to speak. So look, you're um, a Goldwing enthusiast, yeah. owning Goldwing International. There's right. a, a little plug for you. Yeah. But and you're used to the sort of culture of gold wings. Yeah. And, and as you were saying, this is unusual because I've seen golf clubs before, but the trailers and all the rest yeah. of the rigmarole. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about the sort of the culture of the wing then, because you've really got into it, haven't you? And you import all this sort of special gear. I mean, what's your favourite toy? Oh, this one now. Is it? Yeah, the golf accessory. Yeah. Yeah, the gold wing has got to be the ultimate golf accessory. As if gold wings weren't <laughs> sad enough in the first place. Well, exactly, golf yeah. as well. So what are you going to do? Are you going to develop this for sale or is this going to well, be yeah, it? Yeah, there's I mean, been a lot of interest in it. Yeah. I mean you won't see it perhaps in the bike world, but you know, at the golf clubs we've visited. Yeah. We travel around with this and people just think it's a good idea to combine now, the two. I could well see it with a bit of glass fibre around there or whatever, in metal flake, no? Wouldn't we do that? No, I'm yeah, not being funny. a few funny. more lights, <laughs> a bit more chrome. I'm not being funny. But, you know, making a nice sort of container Well, for we'd it, rather no? just keep it simple. Would it? Because the idea is that you but can But that actually... doesn't fit the gold wing culture, though, does it? <laughs> well, we're all simple. You know that. <laughs> all right, I got then. that in before <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah. So keep it simple, and that's the essence of so it. So the idea is you could take it off, much like a trailer. Yeah. You, know, you could take all this attachment off yeah. in maybe five minutes. Yeah. And just back to a normal bike. That's right. And so you don't have to pretend you've got these um, these two sports. That's right. Yeah. So if you don't want to be that sad that you're <laughs> going to take your golf clubs with you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, look, I think what I better do because rain clouds are gathering somewhat, aren't they? And you've actually come for a game of golf, all playing a part. This is it. You're going to have a yeah. actual go. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you're going to show me which end of the club I should hold. <laughs> Well, someone said, get that muck off the end of the club. Yes. <laughs> and when I looked at you, I said, no, the other end. <laughs> and after the break, there's more from Wayne in Burnley and Richard rides a GSXR 750. <laughs> One of my earliest memories as a biker was when me and my spotty mates about 16 years ago leering around on a motley assortment of old Yamaha fizzes and an ancient MTX 50 were waiting at a garage forecourt for our 25p's worth of fuel and in thundered one of the very first GSX-R 750s. It stopped, we all stood there, wow! And off clambered this little ancient man. He must have been 95 and we couldn't believe it. Heartbroken. But it does go to show the status of the bike then, and it still has that now. 16 years later, it's still around and this is the latest. Comparing it with the bike I saw back then, the biggest difference is, well, now it's pretty. Back then, it was hideous. Slab-sided with a great snub flat nose to it and the tank sitting on top of that ridiculously old-fashioned frame, old-fashioned even then. But now, and for the first time, the GSX-R really, really is a very pretty bike. Right from its pointy nose to its little gathered-up tail, Gone is the hideous seat hump that used to cover the pillion seat on the previous version to replace by a much finer, neater, more tapered tail. And here's another huge difference compared with the bike back then. It's light, the thing weighs nothing, about the same as a 600, which with the power it's got can mean only one thing, fun and plenty of it. Ten years after I first saw that little old man tottering off his, I managed to buy one, scraping together enough bank loans, overdraft and crippling finance deals to buy a WP model in 1994. I loved it, but compared to this, it felt like a bus. 
Who's got a pretty little face then? Well, it has compared to the last one, which always looked kind of like it had been chasing parked cars. This is far more pert and pretty. These air intakes contribute to the gorgeous sound at speed as the air rushes through the, the intakes, the carbon fibre effect intakes at the side of the fairing. Down here, the brakes, well, they've been changed. Last year's model was six pots at the front. Now it's just two two-piston calipers, four in all. It's lighter than before, but perhaps you'd use a bit of the immediacy, but they do stop you. Working our way back, well, we've got the engine. They reckon about 4% more power than the previous model, and it's a hell of a lot lighter. And although overall the bike is actually longer than last year, the frame itself is shorter. The extra length comes in the gorgeous swing arm. Climbing aboard, well, you've still got the same rather extreme feet up jockey riding position that you'd expect to find, but it's not that extreme. The bars are direct in front of you. It is short, straight down to the wheel at a very steep rake. And then in front of me, I've got one analog dial for the rev counter, nice and big, and one nice, neat, digital little speedo. All very purposeful. As you'd expect with any modern three-quarter litre superbike, most of the power is available above 7,500 revs. Below that, there's very little to it. In fact, if you were around Stoke-on-Trent recently, you might have seen me on it. I was the guy who stalled at the lights, got the revs up, and then pretty much wheeled it away. And that tends to be what happens until you've got used to it. Once you have got used to it, it is glorious. That light weight makes itself felt, or not felt, more to the point, combined with plenty of power, as long as you're in the right gear and in the right part of the rev range. Braking, stopping and accelerating are all performed beautifully, thank you very much. Like so many superbikes of the moment, it's an intriguing combination of precision and accuracy together with brute force, both of which it has in huge supplies. If your mates are all roaring around on blades and R1s, don't worry. If you're any kind of rider, you will be keeping up with them. No problem, thank you. On a track, well, it might lose, but don't forget, it's 750. It's not one litre. In the end, when the payments became too much, like so many before me, I had to sell my GSX-R in midwinter and at a crippling loss. This new one, though, will set you back about £7,500 straight from the showroom, but as always, the advice is don't just go straight out to the dealer and hand over your hard-earned. Shop around, haggle. You can pick up an X demonstrator like this one with about 400 miles on the clock for 7100 No, get off, it's mine! I found this one fair and square, and I'm not letting it happen to me again. You can stay with me, don't you worry. No! Get off! We won't be parted, don't worry. It's happened once, it's not going to happen again. Now you see that little Yamaha there that Lewis is on? A budding Dougie Lampkin of the future. They're actually quite old in the teeth, them things. You can't buy them nowadays, but that's a TY80. And every trials rider of the past cut the teeth on them things. But unfortunately, Montessa haven't bothered to do a little one as we speak. But maybe they will in the future, because there is one done by Gas Gas and Beta. But Lewis there seems very competent and happy on his little TY80. Now I'm joined with Andrew Thompson here, who in actual fact isn't a trials rider. In fact, you just like having a play on the field uh, yep. on a, a bit of a rough bike, don't you, Andrew? So, what's it like having the chance to stick your bum, or at least in this case, you stand up on a, on a world-class trials machine? It's brilliant. It's yeah. great having the chance to do it. It's a one-off thing. Yeah, because normally you can't, can you? You can't exactly go no. in the shop, can you, and say, give us a go, no. mister. Yeah. You get a chance. So, you like the idea? Yeah, brilliant. And what have you done? Have you put a couple of quid in the... the Charity yeah. donation box yeah. and a Are you into trials in particular or do you fancy bikes in general? Oh yeah, I like bikes, but I'm into trials is probably my best. Yeah, yeah. So do you follow the boys, the likes of Dougie Lampkin and that? Uh, yeah, I've got a few videos. Have that, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, what do you think of the bike then? It's brilliant. Up to your standard then, is it? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's so amazing. if you won the lottery tomorrow, then what would you spend your money on? Oh, I'd definitely get one of these. Would you? Yeah. yeah. And I suppose you'd treat yourself to a big superbike and yourself yeah. to a... Uh, crosser. A crosser, yeah. yeah, and whatever else you can get your money on. Yep. Uh, you're not old enough yet then, are you, for the road? No. No, but no. if you... You've got to get a road bike in the future. Yeah. Do you reckon, just as a matter of interest, do you reckon that having a ride on the likes of a trials bike on the rough helps you for the future for riding a road bike? 
Yeah, because uh, you're learning to control the bike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And getting the funny feeling, the, the, yeah, the balance, mm. and all the funny feelings of the front wheel slipping away and all that yeah. on the mud. Yeah. I suppose it's uh, it's a bit cheaper falling off a borrowed bike. Yep. If you should fall off a borrowed bike rather than a road bike when you do treat yourself to one. Right, I've got Mike here who actually I've been watching him and he's definitely a trials rider, you can tell. You've got the, the style, the knack. Although you don't look like you've got proper trials gear on. No. You're obviously not a poser. No, I'm not. But nonetheless, you've got the right gear in respect, you've got a thing on your head and you've got your boots on. That'll do nicely. So, just just let's go by this. Do you like these here new Montessas? Certainly do. And do you feel you're qualified to comment? Because I know already the fact that you've actually had just about every trials bike in the world. That's it. So you've had all the different brands, your gas gases and everything, B to Yam. Have you had the old Yams or not? Have you tried about, them out? Uh, early TY I think is yeah. TY then. Yeah. So the so our viewer knows, because regular viewers are more road bike lads. TYZ is the water cool Yamaha trials bike and the pinker is because they did do it in pink, didn't they? Which well, is really it. not a boy's colour, but nonetheless. Um so what do you think of this baby anyway? Bob on. You like it? I can't fault it. So there we have it. It's a new idea, is that, a new concept on have a go before you buy. Not a bad idea, and I think it should catch on. Maybe all the other brands might just allow that in the future. Meanwhile, due to the fact that I am an ex-British champion on this type of machine, obviously I've convinced them to let me have a go. So I'm just going to do a wheelie and pivot round this here tree. Thanks very much. See you soon. <laughs> And coming up on Two Wheels next week, I take a ride on Ducati's 600cc Monster Dark. And Wayne is back in Yorkshire for more advice for lady bikers thinking about new helmets, boots and gloves. <laughs>